All right, for number 22, um, angle of depression here is 35 degrees. And then remember, the two horizontal lines here are parallel. So by alternate interior angles, this angle within the triangle is also 35 degrees because alternate interior angles are congruent. Then what we have is an opposite in the hypotenuse. So to find x here, we're going to go sine 35 equals 100 over x. Now, if you guys remember, in this instance, when the variable's in the bottom, these are going to just trade places. So what we're going to do is 100 divided by the sine of 35, and x is going to end up being 174.3 to the nearest tenth. In number 23, we have a tangent to the circle. So a tangent to the circle is automatically going to make a 90 degree angle. And the other thing I want to use here, this is a diameter. So that's going to split the circle into two arcs of 180 degrees. This right here, b to y, is 31. So what I'm going to do real quick, I'm going to find this arc from y to a by doing 180 minus 31 here. So 180 minus 31 is going to give us 149. Now the angle here that we want, this yac, is called an inscribed angle. Now inscribed angle means the vertex is on the circle. So an inscribed angle is half the measure of the arc that it runs into. So angle YAC here is going to be 149 divided by 2, which is going to give us 74.5 degrees. For number 24, we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So um, on the formula sheet, the two legs are the same, and the hypotenuse is the leg times the square root of 2. So this will be really nice for us. This is 12 times the square root of 2, so that means the leg here, which is x, is just going to be 12. For number 25, we have right triangle, 55 degree angle. The 8.9 is opposite, and the x is adjacent. So I'm going to do tangent of 55 equals 8.9 over x. And again, we did a similar question a second ago. If the variable's on the bottom, these trade places. So I'm going to do 8.9 divided by the tangent of 55 to get my answer here, which is about 6.2 to the nearest tenth. Surface area of a sphere is 4 pi times your radius squared. Now this says the sphere has a diameter of 10, so the radius is 5, and we're going to leave that in terms of pi. So I'm going to do 4 times 5 squared, which is 100, and that would be my answer, 100 pi centimeters squared here since we're talking about area. For number 27 here, we've got angle B and angle D opposite angles here in a parallelogram is what we want this to be. So opposite angles are congruent and if this were to be a parallelogram these missing angles A and C, A would be a same side interior with D, D and C would be same side interior. So um, angle A and angle C have to add up with the 45 to be 180. So all you have to do 180 minus 45 um, angle C and also angle D will be 135 degrees. All right, all we're doing here, uh, Pythagorean theorem. We're missing a leg in a right triangle. So the two legs, the sum of the squares of the legs, equals the hypotenuse squared. Um, what we're going to end up with here, let me slide this over so you guys can see the calculator better. Um, let's see. Uh, to do 13 squared minus 12 squared, that's 25. And the square root of 25 is just 5, so that's our missing side there. Surface area of a cone. The surface area formula for a cone is pi times the radius times the slant height plus pi times the radius squared. This gives us the part that wraps around the cone, and then the pi r squared gives us the circular base. So my radius is 5. Slant height is actually given to us here as 17. So I'm going to kind of do this in two separate terms. I'm going to do 5 times 17, which is going to give me 85. And then 5 squared is 25. And then all we have to do is add the 25 and 85 together. 110 pi. Surface area is units squared. 
Okay, as we get to number 30, I'm going to pull the formula sheet back out here. I'm actually going to use two different theorems in the same problem. We're going to use this one where we have a tangent and a secant. And then we're also going to use this first one where we have two chords. Um, so these two formulas are what I'm going to be using to do this problem. Okay, so for number 30, let me start with, um, let's start with y first. I'm just going to kind of ignore this part. It should be 5 times y equals 6 times 8.75 along the same lines. So all you have to do there, 5y, 6 times 8.75. So what I'm going to do on the calculator here is 6 times 8.75, and then I'm going to divide that by 5. So y is 10.5. Now, totally separate problem. Try if you can to ignore these two little pieces. This is a little tricky because we have this extra line in here, but when you have a point outside the circle like this, I want to go from the segment to where it touches the circle here, and then I want to do a segment this point outside to where it touches the circle all the way over here. So this is going to be 13, that's the outside. The entire segment would be 13 plus 6 plus 8.75. And that's going to be equal, the other segment that connects here, x, the outside here is x, the whole thing is also x, so that's going to end up being x squared. So 13 plus 6 plus 8.75 here, we're going to get 13 times 27 point, whoops, sorry, 75, hopefully you guys can see that on the calculator, is equal to x squared. So this is 360.75 equals x squared. Now I'm going to take the square root of that, and ooh, this is going to round up to be 19. So that's my x value there. Um, for number 31, a lot of people having a rough time with this. Um, 23 degrees is this inscribed angle. Now, an inscribed angle and the arc that it runs to right there, NQ, the relationship is that the angle is half the arc. So this is going to be 46 degrees, the arc there. Now, um, I have another angle, which is what we're going to try and determine in this diagram. This is a central angle. So a central angle happens to intersect the same arc here. Central angle and the arc are the same. So here O is 46 degrees. The inscribed angle is half the arc, but the central angle is going to be the same. Central angle has the vertex on the center, inscribed angle has its vertex on the circle. Let's move this up a little bit. 32, let's just label. We've got 7x plus 2y, lm is 13, and then we have negative 2y plus x, and ol is 11. Um, let's see here, what should we do? Um, opposite sides of a parallelogram here are congruent, um, but it looks like I'm going to have x and y in each of these equations. Now, the only thing I'm going to do just really quickly is I'm just going to rewrite this expression as x minus 2y when I set this problem up. It's exactly the same thing, I'm just reordering the terms to help me here. So I'm going to write 7x plus 2y equals 13. That's the top and bottom equal. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the left and right. Remember, I just reorganized these terms real quick. So x minus 2y equals 11. Now this is a system of equations. So what I'm going to notice here is my y's are opposites. So I'm going to use elimination here and just eliminate these. So I'm going to add the bottom line to the top line in this question. Um, 7x and x will give me 8x, 13 and 11 is going to give me 24, 2y plus a negative 2y adds up to 0, so that's why that's eliminated, and if I divide here by 8, x is just going to be 3. Now, if we want to find y, we're going to have to take and plug that back in to one of these equations here. It doesn't matter which one, so let me just plug it into the second equation, so 3 minus 2y equals 11. If we subtract 3 from both sides, I get negative 2y equals 8. So then, oops, run out of room here, y is going to be negative 4. 
opposite sides of a parallelogram there are congruent. That's what I'm using. All right, the key to doing number 33 is remembering that a tangent to a circle, if it runs into a radius, is automatically going to be a 90 degree angle. And they're giving us this angle here, P is 15. And to get X, we know the inside angles of a triangle add up to 180. So I'm going to subtract 90 and I'm going to subtract 15. So X here is going to be 75 degrees. Um, number 34, 45, 45, 90. The two legs in a 45, 45, 90 are the same. And the hypotenuse is the leg times the square root of 2. Now, for this particular problem, it does say decimal round to the nearest tenth. So um, 5 roots of 2, I should write my answer as 5 times the square root of 2, which is going to be... 7.1 to the nearest tenth. I'm going to round that up. 35, this diagram is extremely complicated, but let me mark some stuff up. This is an angle bisector. A here where it runs into the circle and B here where it runs into the circle is tangent, so those are automatically 90 degree angles. Now, if I were to notice the two triangles inside here, the BPO and the APO, those I could argue are congruent. I would have angle, angle, reflexive property on that OP with the side. So those two triangles are exactly equal right there. They tell you AOC is 62 degrees. So the angle they want, POB, right here, since these are congruent triangles, also has to be 62 degrees. So that's just your answer. You don't have to do anything else with that question. 36, if a parallelogram here, we have... 5x plus 10, and angle 1 is 2x plus 70. Parallelogram opposite angles are congruent, so I'm going to set these equal. I'm going to do two steps in one here. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides, and I'm going to subtract 10 in the same step. So we're going to get 3x is equal to 60. X is going to be 20. Now, the question says find the measure of angle force. You're going to have to do two things here. We're going to have to plug this back in. So um, either one of these angles, it doesn't matter. Let me just plug it in right here. So 2 times 20 is 40 plus 70 would make this angle 110 degrees. Now, that angle and angle 4, since this is a parallelogram, would be same side interior angles. So they have to add up to 180. Angle 4 is going to end up being 70 degrees. For 37, we're doing a 30-60-90 triangle here. Um, the formula, you have your short leg, your short leg times the square root of 3, which is what we're given here, and your hypotenuse, which is twice the short leg. Now, this problem's a little tricky because the short leg, which is 18, is equal, I'm sorry, the long leg is given to you here. That should be the short leg times the square root of 3. You have to divide by the square root of 3. Now, in this instance, you have to rationalize the denominator. This is going to be 18 roots of 3. This will be square root of 3 times square root of 3, square root of 9. So that would actually simplify to 3. The whole purpose of that is to get rid of the radical in the denominator. And we can divide 18 by 3. So this is going to be your x, which is 6 radical. Oh, I'm so sorry. In that diagram, it's y. That's going to be your short leg, 6 radical 3. And then all you have to do to find the hypotenuse is multiply that by 2. So that's going to end up being 12 radical 3. And we're going to do one more here as fast as possible. This has got two angles, so I'm going to use the law of sines. It's the sine of the angle over the side opposite. We're going to find C here. So... What I'm going to do, I'm going to solve a proportion. We're going to cross multiply. So I'm going to do the sine of 71, close the parentheses there, times the cross product, that's 59. We're going to divide it by 57. Now you're going to get this weird decimal, and this weird decimal is going to be equal to the sine of C. So remember, you want to do second sign to cancel that out, and I'm going to do second answer. That'll be the angle measure. So this was like this 0.9787. I'm just rounding a little bit. But if you just do it right on the calculator, you don't have to worry about that. So I did inverse sign of my answer. This should be to the nearest degree 
angle C being 78 degrees.